মুক্তিযুদ্ধের চেতনা বিকাশে অঙ্গীকার বদ্ধ থেকে বাংলাদেশের সঠিক ইতিহাস ঐতিহ্য ও সম্ভাবনার নানা ইতিবাচক দিক তুলে ধরার লক্ষ্যে এবং সুস্থ সংস্কৃতি বিকাশের প্রত্যয়ে অনলাইন টেলিভিশন চ্যানেল ইউকে ভিডি টিভি ডিজিটাল বাংলার আলোর মিছিলকে এগিয়ে নিতে লাইক কমেন্ট শেয়ার করে আপনিও থাকুন আমাদের সাথে ইউকে ভিডি টিভি হি আর টু সার্ভ দ্য কমিউনিটি আমাদের deepest respect to the Bangla language martyrs of 1915. I'd like to request Our Excellency, the High Commissioner and the High Commission officials to do the honor. Thank you. Now, we'll observe a minute silence to pay our deepest homage to the departed souls of the Bangla language martyrs, our father of the nation, Bongo Bondu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, and his family members. Thanks everyone. Now it's time to start the event. I'd like to request Our Excellency, the Bangladesh High Commissioner, Saida Munatasim for her welcome remarks. Shomani to Shudhi, Ibn Kustit Piyo Bhai Bunera. আসসালামু আলাইকুম শুভ অপরাহ্ন আজ অমর একুশে ফেব্রুয়ারি মহান শহীদ দিবস ও আন্তর্জাতিক মাতৃভাষা দিবস এই মহান দিবসে আমি সালাম জব্বার বরকত রফিক শফিউর সহ বান্য সকল মহান ভাষা আন্দোলনের অমর একুশের বীর ভাষা সৈনিকদের এবং বাংলা ভাষার মর্যাদা রক্ষার্থে জীবন উৎসর্গকারী সকল ভাষা শহীদদের প্রতি আমার গভীর শ্রদ্ধা জ্ঞাপন করছি এবং তাদের আত্মার মাতৃরা করছি ডিসটিংগুইশ গ্যাস 21st February or immortal Ekeshe is a red letter day in the history of the Bengali nation. It is a day in which we, the Bengali people across the globe, take tremendous pride in, as on this day in 1952, fearless Bengali students sacrificed their lives while protesting to secure the right to speak in their mother tongue, Bangla. On this solemn occasion, I pay my deep homage to the immortal language martyrs of 1952, who shed blood to protect the dignity of our mother tongue, Bangla. I also pay profound respects 
to our nation's founding father and father of Bengali nationalism, architect of Bangladesh independence, father of our nation, Bangabhutu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, who was not only a valiant frontline leader of the Bangla language movement, but also the chief coordinator of the All Party Students Language Action Committee. The greatest Bengali of all time, according to the BBC, Bangabundu was also the first Bengali to speak Bangla at the 29th UN General Assembly and honor Bangla internationally. In 2021, while people around the world feel optimism of triumph of life over the deadly coronavirus as vaccines are being rolled out, we the people of Bangladesh also celebrate this year as birth centenary of the Bangabundu in collaboration with the UNESCO and the Mujibir International Mother Language Day. Today, I'm honored to convey my deep gratitude to our Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, who in response to a campaign by Canadian expatriate Bangladeshis took the bold diplomatic initiative to table a resolution at the UNESCO's 30th General Assembly, honoring Bengali Language Martyrs Day, 21st of February, as the International Mother Language Day. And thus, inspiring all nations of the world to celebrate and preserve their mother languages and their multicultural and multilingual diversity. I also salute our Prime Minister for establishing the International Mother Language Institute, the only one in Dhaka, and restoring mother tongue of five major ethnic hill minorities of Bangladesh and making it mandatory for them in their primary curricula. For the past few years, Bangladesh High Commission London has been partnering Bangla Language Martyrs Day and the International Mother Language Day with UK National Commission for UNESCO creating cultural connectivity between the UK, Bangladesh, and our beloved Bangladeshi British community here in the UK and also those in Ireland, for which I'm truly grateful to Mr. James Bridge, the CEO and Secretary General of this important UK institution. We've also tried to reach out to the vibrant multicultural diplomatic community over the past three years, embassies and high commissions in London that have crossed cultural boundaries to extend friendship and solidarity with Bangladesh and the International Mother Language Day through their brilliant cultural performances in their, in their mother languages. I thank all my fellow ambassadors and high commissioners from today, there are 12 diplomatic missions in London participating in today's event. Our heartfelt gratitude to the Newham Music Department and their music choir comprising of multilingual children from different schools who will perform today's Omur Ekushe or the International Mother Language Day song. We are greatly honored today to have Her Excellency Dr. Dipu Muni, who I believe has joined from Dhaka by now, uh, to have Her Excellency Dr. Dipu Muni, Honorable Education Minister of Bangladesh, who joined us from Dhaka, and Mr. Paul Scully, Honorable Minister for London of Her Majesty's Government. We are inspired by the gracious presence of Ms. Irina Bokova, former Director General of the UNESCO, who had joined us from Paris, whose dynamic and monumental UNESCO leadership has taken International Mother Language Day to new heights. We are also honored by the presence of the Commonwealth Secretary General, Baroness Patricia Scotland, uh, who made cultural diversity the hallmark of our tenure at the Commonwealth. I'm very pleased to welcome Mr. Ben Meller, the new director of South Asia at the UK FCDO, in, in effect, the boss of all South Asian High Commissioners and Ambassadors, as well as Mr. Mr. Charlie Walker, director of British Council UK, for joining us for the first time. The High Commission is grateful to the very respected Mr. Abdul Ghaffar Chaudhary, Ghaffar Bhai, the legendary columnist and lyricist of the 21st February Omur Ekushe Language Martyr Song. We welcome senior community leader Mr. Sultan Sharif and our veteran freedom fighters who are joining us today virtually and our esteemed members of the Bangladesh community living in the UK for joining us virtually. I salute our Bangladesh British community and those in Ireland who have made great sacrifices to preserve Bangla culture and language in the UK, including erecting the iconic language martyrs monument, the Shahid Minar at the Shahid Alta Bali Park at the Tar Handels Borough. It is a symbol of, which is a symbol of protecting, protect, uh, protest against racism. I thank you all for joining us and I salute you once more. Ladies and gentlemen, as we celebrate Golden Jubilee of Bangladesh's independence in 2021 and 22, I would like to reaffirm that 21st February is more than than Bangla Language Martyrs Day. To us, it is a symbol of our 2000 years old, a Buddhist, Pali, and Indo-Aryan Sanskrit linguistic and cultural heritage, a symbol of our secular, progressive, and inclusive Bengali values, 
which were the fundamentals on which the father of the nation of Bangladesh, Bangabundu, founded the Secular People's Republic of Bangladesh in 1971. On the eve of Bangladesh's Golden Jubilee, we stand proud as a nation, along with our expatriate communities in UK and Ireland, that our Language Martyrs Day has transcended boundaries and touched the hearts of millions as the International Mother Language Day. According to BBC sources, the UK is now home to 311 languages, while London itself is home to people speaking in 300 dialects, representing a truly diverse and multicultural hub of the world. A recent London survey has identified that Bangla language may be among the top three most spoken languages in Greater London. As we celebrate multilingualism today, in the presence of Minister for London, Mr. Paul Scully, the British Council, UK National Commission for UNESCO and the UKF CDO, I call upon them to encourage restoration and continued support to the local Bengali language and culture schools in the, Bingo, in the Bangla, Bangladesh, Bangladeshi populated local boroughs so that the very talented young generations of Bengali British community can reconnect to the secular and progressive Bengali art, culture, literature and heritage so that they do not forget their roots. In a world where 45% of the 6,000 mother languages are endangered, communities are at the risk of forgetting their ethnic roots and language and culture. Where intolerance, extremism, and bigotry are fragmenting our world, we must foster multilingualism, multiculturalism, and diversity for creating a peaceful and tolerant and inclusive society, leaving no one behind. In Bengali Nobel laureate poet Rabindranath Tagore's words, it should be a world where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever widening thought and action into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake. I thank you all. With these inaugural words, I would like to uh, request Mr. James Bridge, Chief Executive and Secretary General of the UK National Commission for UNESCO to make his welcome remarks, our partner of today's event. James, you have the floor. Thank you, um, Your Excellency. Assalamu alaikum and hello. Um, that was an inspiring speech and I loved what you said as well about the cultural connections with the community in the UK. So it's a privilege to mark International Mother Language Day and the continuing celebrations of the 75th anniversary of the founding of UNESCO in London. I'd like to thank you, Your Excellency Saida Muna Tasneem, on behalf of the National Commission for our co-partnership in this mutual year, International Mother Language Day. I'd also like to note with the honor of having the Minister of Bangladesh her Excellency Dr. Deepu Moni, the chairperson of the Bangladeshi National Commission for UNESCO for particip participation as guest of honor. And also, um, I'm delighted that Her Excellency Irina Bokova, the former DG, with whom I've had the pleasure of working over the years, is here with us as chief guest. And as you'll know, Mrs. Bokova is a renowned global advocate of the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals in which you too, Your Excellency, take us such a strong interest. We're also hugely honoured to have the Right Hon. Patricia Scotland QC Sec Gen of the Commonwealth Secretariat here, and of course the ministerial presence from Paul Scully and from FCDO with um, our colleague Mr Ben Meller. I also wanted to pass on to you from UNESCO and a colleague of Mrs um, Bokova's um, and the Minister's um, His Excellency Ambassador Matthew Lodge, um, the UK's ambassador to UNESCO, would like to pass on his greetings to you from Paris. And as with the chair of the UK National Commission for UNESCO, Professor Colin McInnes from Wales. So as you know, Bangladesh and the UK are key sister members of the UN's 193 member strong UNESCO organization, whose core goal is to build the defenses of peace in the minds of women and men. And UNESCO believes in the importance of cultural and linguistic diversity and of freedom of expression for creating and maintaining sustainable societies. It's within its mandate for peace that it works to preserve the differences in cultures and languages that foster tolerance and respect for others. 21st of February, 
is the anniversary of the day when Bangladeshis bravely protested for their language and some paid the ultimate price. As during his 100 year anniversary celebration, I would like to pay my respects to, the, to Bangladesh's founding father, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, who led the Bangla language movement in his capacity as a leader of the East Pakistan Muslim Student League, with the state language demand being one of the most prominent, in fact, the most prominent. And as you know, he suffered years in jail bravely too, and still continued. I'd like to congratulate the government and the people of Bangladesh on the Golden Jubilee of independence in 2021 as well. The participants may know also that UNESCO has declared 2020 to 21 as the 100th anniversary of the birth of um, Sheikh Rahman, which fits with the continuing 75 year anniversary of the celebrations of the founding of UNESCO in London. So this is a really nice fit. Um, I'm really delighted too that UNESCO has introduced the UNESCO Bangladesh Bangabadu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman International Prize for the Creative Economy to reward the outstanding global initiatives of youth in the field of culture and the creative economy sector. This linking together of the private and the public is something special. So this prize will be awarded every two years of US $50,000 to an individual organization with recognized excellence in nurturing entrepreneurship among young people in the cultural and creative industries. I'm also looking forward to building on our partnership to explore newer avenues of collaboration together with the Bangladesh High Commission in the fields of education, culture, science, communication and information. Also, I want to commend, as is so important, Bangladesh's initiative in 99 to table the resolution at UNESCO General Assembly to globally recognize the 21 February as International Mother Language Day. And I think what we're seeing today is part of the fruits of that initiative. And the objective of that, as you know, is to promote ling linguistic and cultural diversity and preservation of more than the 6,000 mother languages, as the High Commissioner said, of the world. As you'll know as well, UNESCO selected the theme for the specific 21, 2021 International Mother Language Day as fostering multilingualism for inclusion in education and society. This signifies the diversification of languages and multilingual, multilingualism could advance cohesive inclusion and the attainment of the sustainable development goals by 2030, something we're focused on too this year in the context of the G7, the G20, and of course the COP26. So lastly, um, I would like to hand over to the Right Honourable Baroness Scotland, and I would like to very warmly thank the High commissioners and embassies in London, and especially the artists and performers themselves for their wonderful participation in today's, today's event, showcasing their histories, traditions, and culture, and as the High Commissioner said, our wonderful cultural connectivity. Thank you. Thank you, uh, James. Can everyone hear me? Okay, uh, sorry about that. Thank you very much, James. Um, that was very encouraging. You know, uh, next year would be the 75th anniversary of UK National Commission for UNESCO. We absolutely look forward to celebrating that together with the uh, 70th anniversary of the Language Movement Day because it was in 1952 and 2022 would be 70 years of that particular movement. So we absolutely look forward to working together to create greater connectivity within UK National Commission for UNESCO, as well as with our community here in, in, in the UK. Um, um, and thank you for, you know, uh, partnering with us over the past three years, and we continue to extend that collaboration in the future. We now have the honor of requesting uh, Baroness Patricia Scotland, Secretary General of the Commonwealth, um, who I already said that championing cultural diversity during her entire tenure and uh, many initiatives she's taken to, you know, uh, to create tolerance and uh, greater collaboration on cultural arena between the Commonwealth as well as youth. Uh, Banna Scotland, you have the floor, madam. Thank you. Excellencies, Honourable Ministers, Ms. Bakova and other distinguished guests, friends and colleagues, Salam Alekum. It is a great joy for me to be with you and to be able to join you virtually today when we celebrate the golden jubilee of Bangladesh achieving 
independence. I want to really thank the Bangladesh High Commissioner for inviting me again to address you as we celebrate this wonderful day, the diversity of languages and mother tongues. And may I say that the High Commissioner has been supreme amongst all of those who have made sure that this celebration is one of joy and of importance. And we thank her so much for her energy, her spirit, and her dynamism. Because today is a special day. During the past year, we have all seen the heightened threats to our health systems, education, and social interactions as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic has caused unnatural separation, which has taken a physical form in a way which we have not seen for more than 100 years. It means that language has become, for millions of people across the globe, the only form of contact or communication they have been able to enjoy with many of those they love. Our voices are a powerful tool and have become therefore even more potent during this stressful and difficult time. Words matter now more than ever. They are the tools we use to communicate our love, but it's also the, communes, uh, uh, the tools used to communicate hate, to give comfort and to wound. Therefore, to understand each other, the nuances, the inflections and the emphasis of language becomes ever more important. Thus being able to speak in our mother tongue so that we can truly understand and be understood has perhaps become more poignant today, more valuable, more precious than it has ever been. As Nelson Mandela once said, if we talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, that goes to his heart. Language is a powerful expression of identity. And in the Commonwealth, a family of nations where thousands of languages are spoken, one language, English, joins all of us. Our common language has allowed us to cherish, work, to deepen appreciation for the multiple identities we enjoy and celebrate as individuals, as communities, and as nations. The reach and the diversity of the Commonwealth family gives us special understanding of what is gained by drawing on a range of perspectives, traditions, and thought. Wisdom and insights from our many lively cultural inheritances and the rich philosophical traditions helps us to build peace, progress, and prosperity, which are inclusive and in which all can share. Promoting knowledge and understanding of mother tongues is integral to that continuing process and helps us collectively in the Commonwealth to nurture positive and practical commitment to mutual support and solidarity based on understanding, tolerance, and dialogue. Observance of the International Mother Language Day increases awareness of the vital role which mother languages play in development of by adding to cultural diversity and intercultural connection. Another immensely important contribution which mother languages make in our member countries is towards attaining quality education for all and the massive development then developmental benefits this delivers and it lays the foundations for economic and social inclusivity, improving prospects for employment and enterprise, for gender equality and enhanced health and life expectancy. We must be on our guard and alert to the danger that globalization for all its advantages uh, that it may bestow can marginalize those who communicate solely or principally in their own mother language. It can also diminish the richness of human cultural diversity, limit opportunities, and lead to the loss of traditions or memories 
and of unique and valuable modes of thinking or expression. So as we mark International Mother Language Day 2021, we again celebrate the creativity and linguistic diversity of the human race. We also remember with respect the sacrifice and resolute action of those who stood firm to protect Bangla as their language of choice. Many young people lost their lives in defense of their mother tongue and cultural identity. In the Commonwealth, we benefit by having a common language in which to conduct business and we recognize the advantages we derive by having means of connection and cooperation which transcend boundaries. We also recognize that within our member countries, there are languages, traditions, which must be preserved and communities for whom their mother language is a vital expression of identity which due honor should be accorded. So we thank the people and government of Bangladesh for International Mother Language Day and the opportunity it gives us to reflect on the range and diversity of languages through the humanity connects and communicates. So on behalf of the whole Commonwealth family, all 2.5 billion of us, one third of the world, I join with you in recommitting to uphold and hand on the inheritances we received and to honor those whose protecting action and self-sacrifice have enabled us to enjoy such richness and diversity today. So happy, happy International Mother Language Day. And thank you, High Commissioner, for making it happen. Thank you, Baroness Scotland. You always, uh, you know, uh, your speeches are so enlightening, so eloquent. We always get mesmerized with your speech. So we, I'm sure everybody got mesmerized. Uh, what is important that I picked up from your speech is that while it is extremely important to encourage learning in the mother tongue, which we are doing for the ethnic communities in Bangladesh, which wasn't there before. So Prime Minister just started the Hill communities to, at least until pre-primary, class two, three, to do everything, maths and everything in their language. It's also important to be multilingual, to learn foreign languages so that there's more creativity in the economy. And I'm really happy that James had mentioned the uh, UNESCO Bongo Bangladesh Bangabundhu Prize for Creative Economy. Uh, this is something that UNESCO has declared we, along with Bangladesh government, 50,000 US dollars, you're absolutely right. And now we are trying to create with Commonwealth, with the Commonwealth Enterprise um, Investment Council, uh, a Bangabundhu Green Business Award uh, to promote, uh, again, uh, uh, prosperity, you know, uh, climate prosperity. So I hope that we'll be able to do that, everything within the Mujib year. Uh, and thank you, Commonwealth Secretary General, for joining us. Please stay back uh, until our ministers speak. Thank you very much. I now have the honor uh, uh, of inviting Ms. Irina Bukova, who has been UNESCO's Director General from 2009 to 2017. Uh, she's the first uh, Eastern European diplomat and women to lead uh, such an organization. And she's based uh, from Bulgaria. She's a, um, a diplomat who has served as ambassador of a country in many places until she joined UNESCO and really, really enriched its connectivity with countries such as Bangladesh and many other developing countries. From Bangladesh, I'd like to express and convey our special gratitude on behalf of government of Bangladesh because of the way she has interacted with Bangladesh. Uh, she has promoted girls' education with the Honorable Prime Minister, shoulder to shoulder, and helped Bangladesh, uh, uh, you know, the 7 March speech of the Father of the Nation, historic 7 March speech, she, before her tenure ended, uh, she also supported uh, inclusion of the speech in the memory of the World Register as documentary heritage of mankind. So our special gratitude to her for joining us today. Uh, she's an institution and a stalwart. She's a titan in her field. And we're really, really honored by her presence. Ms. Bukova, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. Uh, I'm deeply touched by your very kind uh, presentation. And uh, I'm uh, very honored to be with all of you uh, here today to celebrate once again, as I have done uh, in the past, uh, of the International Mother Language Day. I'm happy to be here uh, also, uh, uh, I would say, with the friends. Uh, of course, uh, James, uh, the uh, uh, Secretary General of the UK National Commission, with whom we have worked uh, long and we continue sharing the same passion, I believe, for diversity, 
for education, for sustainable development. Uh, of course, uh, with uh, my dear friend, uh, uh, Baroness Copland, I still remember her passionate speech once again uh, at uh, UNESCO's executive board uh, during my tenure in defense of uh, quality education, of girls' education, of gender equality and diversity. Uh, and uh, last but not least, definitely, uh, with the Honorable uh, Deepu Moni, uh, who uh, has accompanied uh, uh, the Prime Minister, um, the Honorable Prime Minister, Sheikha Hasina, already in 2011, when we launched together the Global Partnership of Girls and Women's Education. And uh, you know how deeply uh, I respect uh, the Honorable Prime Minister for all her uh, dedication to education, to human development, I would say, because Bangladesh is one of those countries that have reached uh, an impressive uh, human development for a very short span of time, thanks to the leadership and to the political will of the Prime Minister. Uh, and of course, as a former Director General of UNESCO, this day resonates deeply with me, because on one side it was UNESCO, the General Conference of UNESCO already in 99, that adopted uh, the decision to declare this international day, but also it took it further on to link it uh, with uh, education, with cultural diversity, uh, and to make from it, I would say, a broader global platform for diversity, for creativity, and for human dignity. Uh, and today, when uh, uh, this year, when the celebration is under the uh, ambition to overcome uh, the pandemic, the COVID-19, to build back, but build back better, I think once again, it gives us an opportunity to speak uh, uh, as passionate as your excellency, the High Commissioner, and also uh, as Baroness Scotland spoke about diversity and what it brings uh, to today's world, where unfortunately we are not immune from xenophobia, from divisions uh, uh, and uh, populist policies that uh, may divide us and we don't want this to happen. And we know that there is no uh, effective dialogue uh, without respect for linguistic diversity. There will be no uh, building back better if we do not have a better understanding of the people and identities of people and respect for this identity. So there are very many, I would say, uh, platforms that we need to connect together when we speak about sustainable development and building back better. And definitely, I would like uh, just to mention briefly three very important points uh, in my mind. Uh, uh, on one side, uh, of course, and I'm very proud of it, that uh, this linguistic diversity uh, is a must if we want to get the quality education of all children under the goal number four of Sustainable Development Agenda 2030. Because I remember in 2016, we did uh, publish for the first time a policy paper which was entitled, If We Don't Understand, How Can You Learn? Which showed and still is a reality where 40% of the children, they go to school and they listen their schooling education in another language, not their mother tongue language. So this is something very important. And this is where I believe the role of the International Institute of uh, Mother Languages that uh, uh, you, Bangladesh, also uh, um, established that plays a hugely important role. And I remember visiting it in the 20, 2014. Uh, and then in the next year, under the auspices of UNESCO, we established a center, a regional center for mother language, uh, uh, also education, uh, which is already global, not just uh, uh, national, but under the auspices of UNESCO, a uh, global, and it recognized this commitment of Bangladesh to uh, linguistic diversity. The second, because we are in the post-COVID, I think it is very important now, if everything is digital, we have to look also in how we use multilinguistic platforms on the digital space. We can't have a quality education, a digital inclusive education, if we do not also introduce linguistic diversity online on the internet. This is the new big challenge that UNESCO is also working on. I'm very happy that uh, uh, this is happening uh, and we have to absolutely find a solution if we want to all kids to have a quality 
education. And the third point, and you did mention it, uh, Your Excellency, I'm very proud that literally during my last weeks of my tenure at UNESCO, we could inscribe on the registry of the memory of the world, the speech, the famous historic speech of Bagabundu uh, uh, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman that he pronounced on the 7th March, 1971. Uh, and in fact, he declared by this the independence of Bangladesh. We inscribed it on the memory of the world registry. So now it is recognized by all of UNESCO's membership and by the whole of the world. And I would say that uh, this speech, which has been recognized as one of the most inspiring and inf influencing speeches in the world nowadays, uh, is an important reminder us about linguistic diversity. I remember visiting the Shaheen Minar, the monument uh, there, laying a wreath also to the martyrs of the uh, mother language. And I will end my, my presentation and excuse me probably for my bad pronunciation of the Bangla language, but the last phrases of this famous speech, which is very emblematic, I think, to what we are celebrating today. And um, Bagabundo Sheikh Mujibur Rahman said, Ebarer Sangram Amader Muktir Sangram, Ebarer Sangram Swadi Natar Sangram. And if I may say it in English, this time the struggle is for our freedom. So happy International Mother Language Day. And thank you once again. I'm delighted to be with you today. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Pokova. We are always touched by your compassion and love for Bangladesh, Bangla language, and for Bangabundu. Um, you would be so pleased to know that from UK, uh, our High Commission is taking the initiative as 7th of March is coming up. As you know, so far, the historic speech has been translated to 14 international languages. When I was ambassador in Thailand, I had translated to Thai language by Chulalongkorn University. And over here, I, we are on the centenary of the Bongo Buntu. We are, we are going to translate it into Welsh language, Scottish language, and Irish language. We are expecting our foreign minister and the Irish foreign minister to inaugurate it. So it's a great pleasure. And uh, thank you so much for you know, your three points that you made. Um, it's extremely important. We find it increasingly difficult. You know, last two years, we had hired big hotel rooms to dance, to sing in different languages. And we don't know how to do this online this year. It's very difficult. But yet we, we try, you know, mankind never gives up. It's the indomitable spirit of mankind. So we will not give up. Um, thank you very much for your kind words. And um, uh, thank you very much for gracing our occasion. Please stay back with us until you listen to the Newham Music Choir singing the Ekushi February song, Please Don't Go. Um, I now have the pleasure to invite um, Mr. Paul Scully, Mr. Paul Scully MP, Minister for London, and he's also the Minister for Small Business Consumers and Labor Markets. Paul has been a great friend of Bangladesh. And uh, of course, uh, you know, he is the Minister for Greater London. And he bears, it bears a lot of significance for the Bangladeshi British community who, who speaks among the top three languages. So Paul's presence here is uh, very intentionally we have invited him so that he pays greater attention to our Bangladeshi British community in the UK, uh, in London, in Greater London. Paul, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. And it's always such a pleasure to, to see you and to, to, to follow you. And uh, uh, thank you, Ms. Bukova, for your for your kind words. And Baroness Scotland, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's lovely to follow you. And I see so many um, friends, uh, colleagues, uh, and uh, uh, Your Excellencies from uh, uh, High Commissioners and uh, Ambassadors from around the world. It's fantastic that you are um, supporting this excellent event. And it's just testament to uh, the High Commissioner the work that she does, the energy that she brings all the time to to uh, to celebrate such events um, with us all. And it's great to see uh, 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 Dr. Dipamoni as well, my great friend uh, from Bangladesh. I think this is what um, uh, this COVID pandemic has, has, has um, taught us, is how to come back even closer, uh, albeit virtually, on Zoom. We can travel between various parts of London uh, to Dhaka, and around the world just on one screen and we haven't had one yet when someone's had to say by the way you're on mute so that 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 famous phrase so i'll just start as i always do with amashab bangali bondu assalamu alaikum but uh, since this is international mother language day i'll stick to my own mother language if you don't mind for the for, for the for the rest of my uh talk i think 
you, uh, um, uh, Your Excellency said about the fact that um, she wants me to spend a greater concentration with the Bangladeshi community. And actually, um, you know, I, I've um, had uh, I've always enjoyed my time working with the British Bangladeshis and having gone to Bangladesh a number of times myself. Uh, in fact, it was the British Bangladeshi community when I was the uh, chairman of the APPG for the British uh, curry catering industry that they uh, gave me the moniker of the, the curry minister. And I always uh, said that if I never had another job in government, that would be that that would be my unofficial title. I'll be really happy with. But fortunately. Um, thanks to all my friends in, uh, in uh, the British Bangladeshi community, I do now have a, 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 a particular job in government and I'm really happy to represent all of those hundreds of thousands of, uh, of, of British Bangladeshis at the heart of government to make sure that we celebrate the diversity of London. Before I was, um, uh, came on, I just looked at, um, reminded myself of an old map that was doing the rounds a few years ago when they looked at the second first languages spoken in each of the borough, uh, each of the boroughs, the 32 boroughs across London. And there's a number in mine in Sutton in southwest London and the number of uh, southwest London bor uh, boroughs, it's Tamil, there's a big Tamil community there, but there's Polish in some parts, Punjabi and Gujarati as you expect in northwest London, Turkish, Arabic, French, Spanish, Portuguese in, the, in, in um, south, south London, which is quite interesting, Nepalese even, um, Urdu, uh, Lithuanian, but of course, there are three boroughs where Bengali is the um, second most common first language spoken. As you can imagine, Tower Hamlets are new, but, uh, but interestingly enough, it looks like Camden uh, has a significant number of Bengalis as well. So that was that that I found quite ex ex extraordinary. But um, and that does, I think, say a lot about uh, London being uh, continuing to be a warm host and a warm home for. For, for people when they look to um, to, to spread across the, the, the world. And uh, this is testament to uh, Bangladesh's, uh, Bang Bangladesh's struggle over the years, really starting with that, that, that period um, that led to International Mother Language Day. And as we say, we hear not just to celebrate the day, but to commemorate those who sacrificed their lives for the struggle for Bangladesh to become an independent nation, starting with that, uh, uh, stretching away from uh, from from Pakistan um, to recognise uh, uh, Bangla as it uh, uh, as a key mother language in its own right when it was excluded um, uh, at the expense at the expense of um, for Urdu um, in, back in the 1950s. So, but we are back in a struggle at the moment. We are back in a struggle um, that uh, that we are all fighting in terms of COVID. And I'm glad that the vaccination program is starting to. To, to, to grab hold uh, throughout the UK and indeed back in Bangladesh as, uh, as well. But uh, it's important that we all do reach out in our various languages, in our various um, media that to, to, to everybody to make sure that we can uh, get as big a take up of the vaccine as we can so that we can all come back together in person uh, in, in short order. I think that's gonna be so, so important that, that we do so. But uh, we, we're entering a um, uh, uh, an important time for Bangladesh's history, celebrating Bangladesh's history with the 50th anniversary of, of, of independence. Uh, and over that period, it's not just um, the uh, independence of, of the country um, uh, in, in, that has become a, a leader in how to um, uh, develop uh, relationships with its neighbours, well, as we see from uh, the, the, the camps uh, taking on people from Myanmar, whereas we see from the NGO BRAC, that uh, the largest and one of the most effective in the world, but also the, the way that the, the Bangladeshi economy is powering on um, and becoming a middle income country, which really gives us lessons here in the West as well, as we look to how to recalibrate our economy. What, what kind of economy do we want in the West and what can we learn from countries who are powering on um, to combat poverty, to combat deprivation, but doing it in a way that looks out for our neighbours, uh, looks out, reaches out for those who still have very little. And Bangladesh is a great example of, of, of how to do that. And I look forward to continuing to work with you. But I'm looking forward, as I say, to getting back um, in, in person so we can speak our various mother languages uh, in person with each other. Because I, I, we had a, um, a death, unfortunately, just two days ago, 
that some of you, many of you will know on the call, Adam Hak Chowdhury um, from the Conservative Friends of Bangladesh and also a, a senior member of the Bangladeshi Caterers Association. Uh, and I think that just does hit home that this is a very real uh, struggle for us at the moment and an individual struggle. Uh, but, um, but, but the uh, British Bangladeshi community in particular is, uh, I know, very up for making sure that, that we complete that struggle, we get past this. Uh, that as well as celebrating uh, uh, International Mother's, uh, Mother Language Day, as well as commemorating those who have fallen uh, and, and sacrificed so much, that, uh, that we know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again in person. But in the meantime, happy, happy International Mother Language Day. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And thank you for reminding us, all the near and dear ones, friends, colleagues, that we have lost uh, during COVID. And I do pay my condolences to the family of um, uh, Mr. Inam. Inam Bhai was a good friend, such a gentleman, such a successful businessman, and such a community person. He always connected and networked. And I, I would really, really miss him. And uh, thanks, Paul, for all your support to Bangladesh Curry and uh, catering industry. It is the backbone uh, of the economy of Bangladesh and British community, at least the first generation. Uh, of course, the second generation and third generations are now moving on to different, uh, you know, um, gentrified, different kinds of profession or rather, uh, you know, different uh, professions other than uh, curry industry. But nonetheless, we consider curry to be our heritage and we're very proud of it. So thank you very much for your support and thanks for being here. And I hope that you will be connecting us more as the Minister of London in the in the coming uh, 20, this year as we celebrate Bangladesh Bilateral relations 50 years of our relation um at this point uh with the uk minister speaking i now have the honor of uh inviting our honorable education minister dr deepu muni who has been my boss for five years when she was elected uh for the first time in her life as member of parliament in 2009 and immediately was made the first female foreign minister of bangladesh and perhaps of south asia and I've had the single honor of working with her during that, uh, those five years. And after that, she was the chair of the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Foreign Affairs. And again, she was uh, uh, appointed as in, in Prime Minister Sri Krishna's cabinet in 2019 as Education Minister. And now she's the, also the chair of the Human Rights Committee at the Bangladesh Parliament. Um, she's uh, you know, a public health expert from John Hopkins, but she's also a lawyer and a doctor by profession. So I don't know how to really define her. She's just the master of all trades, but she's also perhaps the queen of all trades. So, you know, uh, we're just so honored and so um, happy to have you, uh, Madam, in our program. Thank you for giving us time in your busy schedule. You have the floor, Madam. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Muna. Um, it's uh, just that you missed on um, saying that uh, we have been friends for uh, nearly 40 years now. Uh, <laughs> His Excellency, Mr. Paul Scully, MP, Minister for London, Right Honorable Patricia Scotland QC, Commonwealth Secretary General, Ms. Irina Bukova, former Director General of the UNESCO, legendary lyricist of Omore Kushe Song, the very respected Abdul Ghaffar Chaudhry, Bangladesh High Commissioner to the UK, Her Excellency Saidamuna Tasneem, Excellencies and performers in many beautiful languages for this evening, and Mr. Sultan Mahmoud Sharif uh, with our very beloved Bangladesh community in the UK and Ireland. I'm delighted to join you all this evening from Bangladesh. Prathumei ami unishyo bahannur mohan bhasha andaluner shakul shohider amor srutir prati gophir shraddha nibedan korchi. Jader sarbotchyo tyager binimoye amra peyechi amader matri bhasha banglar shikriti o rashtro bhashar morjada. On this auspicious day of Amor Ekushe, I pay my deep homage to our language martyrs, Salam, Jabbar, Barkot, Shrofik, Shafur, who were among many who made supreme sacrifice on this day in 1952 for protecting the dignity of our mother language and restoring our right to speak in Bangla from a post-colonial oppressive regime. I also send my greetings to peoples and nations all around the world who speak in more than 6,000 mother tongues and promote multilingualism, diversity, tolerance, and peace 
on this International Mother Language Day. On this momentous occasion of the Mujibiyar International Mother Language Day, I humbly pay my profound respects to the founding father of our nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, who was the leading pioneer of the Bangla language movement in 1952 and of Bangali nationalism and the architect of our independence, without whose charismatic leadership, Bangladesh could not have emerged as an independent state in the world map 50 years ago in 1971. As the government and the people of Bangladesh commemorate the historic birth centenary of the Bangabandhu in association with the UNESCO in 2020-2021, while our nation also celebrates the golden jubilee of our glorious independence, commemorating 21st February in London makes this evening very special for me. After all, London is where Bangabandhu set his first footprints on 8th January 1972 as president of independent Bangladesh and the Bangali British community mobilized unprecedented global support for Bangladesh independence in 1971. I also feel especially happy in the midst of so many special friends of Bangladesh, including Ms. Irina Bokova, former director general UNESCO, Commonwealth Secretary General Baroness Scotland and Minister Paul Scully, British Council, UN UNESCO Commission, and the very distinguished Mr. Abdul Ghaffar Chaudhry. I thank High Commissioner Tasneem and her team for organizing this colorful multilingual event with participation of so many diplomatic missions in London. Dear friends, mother language is the most powerful tool and driver of a nation's culture and prosperity. Existence of nations and their history, heritage, culture, and identity all are endangered when their mother tongue comes under threat or becomes forgotten. The Bangla language movement from 1948 to 1952 was one such significant chapter in the history of the Bangali people. It was the harbinger of Bangali civil rights and Bangali nationalism movements and foundation of a language and culture-based secular nation state that culminated into the freedom and independence movement of Bangladesh under the leadership of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the greatest Bangali of all time. On his birth centenary, may I humbly recount that along with our Bangali language activists and martyrs of 1952, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib remained a key driving force and a frontline leader of the Bangali language movement right from 1948. In 1948, as a law student of Dhaka University, Bangabandhu proposed the creation of all party central language action students committee that called for na nationwide strikes demanding Bangla to be a state language of Pakistan. Between 1948 and 1952, the indomitable Bangabandhu was imprisoned three times for being a key instigator and driver in the language movement, according to disclosed intelligence reports. His third imprisonment in October 1949 lasted for nearly two and a half years until he was released following a 11-day hunger strike from 16th February 1952, demanding Bangla as a state language of Pakistan. In 1953, in a public rally in Old Dhaka, it was Bangabandhu who proposed 21st February to be observed as the Martyrs' Day that continued to be honored till date. In 1956, as a minister of the provincial Awami League government, Bangabandhu played a vital role in officially securing Bangla, the status of a state language of Pakistan. In independent Bangladesh, Bangabandhu announced Bangla, our official language, and made history at the United Nations by delivering the first Bangla speech at the World Assembly. Bangabandhu's visionary daughter, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, who is a student of Bangla literature from Dhaka University, following her father's footsteps, also made diplomatic history by helping Bangla language Martyrs Day transcend 
global boundaries and emerge as the UNESCO International Mother Language Day for all peoples of the world, honoring the sacrifice of our language martyrs. Today, I want to specially acknowledge and thank the contributions of two Canadian expatriate Bangladeshis, namely Rafiqul Islam and Abdus Salam, and the mother language lovers of the World Society, who launched the campaign for recognizing Bangla language martyrs day 21 February as the International Mother Language Day in 1997. Our Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina, proactively responded to their call and passed the proposal in the Bangladesh parliament in 1999. She then took the diplomatic initiative for Bangladesh to table a resolution at the 30th General Assembly of the UNESCO and on 17 November 1999 secured unanimous proclamation of 21st February as the International Mother Language Day. We thank the UNESCO for this extraordinary recognition of immortal Ekushe. I also take this opportunity to thank the Director General of UNESCO for eight incredible years, the very distinguished Ms. Irina Bokova for honoring Bangabundu's historic 7th March speech by including it in the UNESCO Memory of the World Register as Documentary Heritage of Mankind in October of 2017. I also thank current Director General of UNESCO, Ms. Audrey Azule, for observing the birth centenary of the Bangabundu with our government and announcing the UNESCO Bangladesh Bangabundu International Prize for Creative Economy on the occasion of the birth centenary. What an honor. Ladies and gentlemen, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina did not stop at getting 21st February international recognition at the UNESCO. In March 2001, she took the initiative to establish the International Mother Language Institute in Dhaka, along with former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. Even though the institute was closed down by successive governments, Sheikh Hasina brought it back to full operation in February of 2010. In 2014, the International Mother Language Institute received accreditation as a Category 2 Institute of the UNESCO and is dedicated to research conservation of 6,000 mother tongues spoken in the world, many of which are endangered or forgotten. May I also thank the Commonwealth Secretary General and Chair in Office, the United Kingdom, for championing the Commonwealth's shared inheritance of diversity, inclusion, and multiculturalism, and propose on behalf of Bangladesh government that on 50 years of Bangladesh's membership at the Commonwealth in 2022, the Commonwealth declares 21 February as the Commonwealth Mother Language and Diversity Day. Dear friends, may I have the pleasure of concluding by recalling that in 2021-22, Bangladesh will not only be celebrating the golden jubilee of its independence, but also 50th anniversary of our diplomatic relations with the United Kingdom. The government of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina looks forward to giving its best to celebrating this historic and special relationship that started with the 1971 overseas freedom movement by our very patriotic Bangali British community, followed by reception of the Bangabundu by the British Prime Minister, Sir Edward Heath, here in London and Bangladesh's recognition by the UK in early 1972. In this regard, I'm very encouraged by the presence of His Excellency Paul Scully, Minister for London, as special friend of the British Bangladeshi community, who speaks also in Bangla. I'm also very pleased to see British Council here today, a British heritage institution that my ministry works very closely with to promote English learning and education in Bangladesh. Taking advantage of both your presence here, may I also propose, given that Bangla is the second most spoken language in Greater London, as mentioned by our High Commissioner, could the Minister and the British Council declare 21 February as the Greater London Language and Diversity Day from 2022, when we observe 70 years of Omore Kushe and that of British Council in Bangladesh. Let this be our language martyr's gift to succeeding 
British Bangladeshi generations to celebrate their ethnic roots and take leadership in promoting a secular culture of peace and tolerance through multilingualism. I thank you all. Joy Bangla, Joy Bangabandhu. May Bangladesh live forever. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Minister. Uh, you have given some, uh, what should I say, fantastic proposals. Uh, uh, just like the British, you know, English speaking people say, fantastic proposals. And I don't know whether we can, uh, you know, implement them, but certainly I'm going to work with the Commonwealth Secretary General and uh, Mr. Paul Scully and other institutions such as British Council, UKFCDO, whether we can indeed uh, have a recognition of 21 February, which UNESCO has universally recognized uh, at a, as a diversity day, perhaps in Greater London, perhaps in the Commonwealth. So definitely we will do, we'll gear all our diplomatic efforts towards that. Thank you for such a wonderful speech. Uh, thank you for encouraging us for your presence and you always owe us with your wonderful uh, you know eloquent uh, comments and uh, thank you very much for being with us and encouraging us uh, thank you for remembering my colleagues and my team uh, which i forgot but my team is sitting right here so i must mention that i have my entire high commission sitting right across but we can't we don't have a camera at the back of me but we have our defense wing our consular wing our commercial wing our diplomatic wing press wing everybody's present here today for the Bhasha Shurhiti Bosh, and they all give their regards to you and everyone uh, participating. All my very best to all of them. Thank you, Madam Former Foreign Minister. Uh, uh, I now have the pleasure of inviting Mr. Ben Mella, who's just joined the South Asia uh, 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 Director of the South Asia. It's a very important directorate. At least we all think we're very important. So South Asians believe they're very important. So he's the new Director of the South Asia, who's replaced the successor of um, Mr. Gareth Bailey, uh, but, you know, we, uh, I've already had meeting with Ben Meller, who's had extensive uh, work uh, with the DFID over many 20 years in Africa and India. And he uh, was looking after the Indo-Pacific desk before joining as director. But we absolutely welcome him to uh, our South Asia family and today at our uh, Amorekishu program. You have the floor, sir. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. And uh, as you said, I am new, so I will avoid trying to speak bad Bangla, but I hope to learn uh, as I get further into the uh, into this desk. And I'm very honoured to be with you uh, virtually at this fantastic event to mark uh, Bangladesh Shahid Dipos and International Mother Language Day. Um, Ekushi February will always be an important uh, day in Bangladesh's calendar. It's a timely moment to pay our respect and to honour the martyrs of 1952 and the many that died during Bangladesh's liberation. Uh, as International Mother Language Day, it's now an important international event and one Her Majesty's Government is delighted to support. Uh, I note the Honourable Minister's suggestions of a couple of additional things that we might wish to celebrate on this day and no doubt uh, that will be considered uh, in due course, but uh, uh, I'm not going to comment on that uh, today, but thank you for those suggestions. Um, this day is already, of course, a wonderful occasion to celebrate the diversity of language and the wealth of different cultures across the world. Celebrating linguistic diversity and promoting multilingual education helps increase our understanding of cultural traditions around the world. And this, in turn, helps to inspire solidarity based on understanding, tolerance and dialogue. The UK is blessed by the dynamism of its diaspora communities, highlighted by the more than 300 languages that are spoken in schools across the UK. And this diversity exists through the 600,000 strong living bridge that connects Bangladesh and the UK. This underpins our story of unbreakable bonds of kinship and culture. And these people to people links enliven both of our countries. As the Honourable Minister just reminded us, this year is an important one for both of our countries as we celebrate the Golden Jubilees of Bangladesh and of UK-Bangladesh relations. Over the past five decades, as friends and partners, we've worked together on vital bilateral and global issues. Today, we work together on issues from COVID recovery to climate change and many places in between our common interests, our shared ambitions, and our cultural, commercial, and personal links will see us continue to work together 
in the next 50 years and beyond. On behalf of Her Majesty's Government, I want to finish by extending my best wishes to everyone marking this day where we come together to proudly express our heritage and culture through the beauty and power of language. Thank you and Donabad. Don't know about to you too, uh, Mr. Mella. You already are starting to learn Bangla, which is very encouraging. And we keep on, we'll keep on, you know, tutoring you Bangla, so that uh, you know you do get encouraged to do something about that London Day on Diversity on 21st of February. Um, uh, the, the last speaker from uh, British side is the uh, director for uh, British Council, Mr. Charlie Walker. Now, British Council is a very important institution that is networking all over the world to uh, extend, uh, to, you know, to do cultural connectivity, but also education and English language. These are very strong areas of British Council work in Bangladesh. And it has been an institution that has been there before Bangladesh became Bangladesh. So it has been there for 70 years. And this year, it will be celebrating 70 years uh, of British Council. And like we said, next year, uh, our 1952 language movement would be observing 70 years. So we absolutely look forward to working with British Council on the 50th anniversary of Bangladesh on a bilateral relations 50 years. So many celebrations to come. So looking forward to working with you. Ms. Walker, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. And um, what an enormous privilege it is to be here um, and, uh, today and to be able to speak at this wonderful event. Um, Minister Dipu Moni, uh, Minister Scully, Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Assalamu Alaikum. Um, so uh, once again, huge thanks to the Bangladesh High Commission um, and the uh, UK National Commission for UNESCO for uh, today's International Mother Language Day celebrations. Um, and thank you to all of the speakers for the inspiring words in support of um, mother languages and in support of language diversity in, in, in the wider sense. We, uh, I, I very much hear um, the proposals of, um, of, of the Honourable Minister from Bangladesh. Um, and uh, I would like to reaffirm our commitment to celebrate the 21st of February um, in years to come with continued enthusiasm. Um, and we'll think about your proposal and no doubt we can discuss them with, with other parties as we go forward. Um, I was particularly keen to accept the um, invitation today to speak to you all because it seems like a long time ago, but in the 1990s, I spent three uh, wonderful years in Dhaka, um, uh, working for the British Council, going backwards and forwards between our offices in Fuller Road, which I expect you know in the heart of the university, and, and Tanmondi, where our teaching centre was at the time. Um, I'm honoured to have visited the Shahid Minar and the Martyrs Memorial in Shahbar, and to have paid my respects um, to the Martyrs in, in, in person. And my three years in Bangladesh was, was made more special by a weekly Bengali language class, um, uh, I like to think I made good progress at the time, but it seems like a very long time ago and the memory is, is very hazy, but definitely the classes took me some way into the beauty of the language. Um, uh, I, you know, I, I had great fun learning to aspirate my consonants and to sound my retroflex T's and, and, and D's, but it really was a, a wonderful experience and a great cultural experience to engage throughout the, those, those three years with Bangladesh. And like all good learning experiences, my brilliant teacher, uh, is etched in, 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 into my memory. So for all of us, the language we grow up speaking plays a huge part in forming the people we become. The first words we learn describe and shape the way we look at the world. They're as familiar as our own brothers and sisters. And, and that's why policies to suppress mother tongues are always fiercely resisted. But of course, as the, as the uh, High Commissioner referenced, I speak to you as somebody who works for an organization, the British Council, uh, which promotes the English language around the world as a second or a third or a fourth language. I don't think there's any real contradiction in this. We believe that as well as being able to speak to your own community, you should be able to communicate to the world. And English is one of the world languages that enables a person to do this. And I might here quote the Australian language professor, uh, Joseph Lobianco, who says there are two disadvantages in global language arrangements. One is not knowing English and the other is knowing only English. So two languages always work better than one. But unfortunately, it is true that most people in the United Kingdom do not learn other, others' languages, probably in large part because we're spoiled by having English as our mother tongue and rely on other people to learn it in order to communicate with us. A recent House of Lords report found that a lack of foreign language skills could diminish British people's openness to cultural engagement. 
and create the perception overseas that the country is unwelcoming. That's a worrying finding for an organization like mine, which has a mission to increase engagement with other countries and make understanding between people easier. Yet at the same time as we hear that British people are bad at languages, we know that 1.5 million children in the United Kingdom are growing up bilingual. At the moment, many of them do not sit GCSE or A-level exams in their other language. That can mean that they don't develop the academic skills to use that language professionally, which is a tremendous waste of their potential. Their loss as individuals, but our loss as a country. So in the British Council, we believe that all young people in the United Kingdom should have the opportunity to learn another language. And uh, we understand that as, as, as um, Baroness Scotland referenced when she invoked the words of Nelson Mandela earlier, that by doing so, you can speak directly to, to people's hearts. So I'd like to congratulate you all on the success of, uh, of this year's International Mother Language Day and the wonderful initiative and, 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 and how established it has become. And of course, extend my congratulations on the ongoing celebrations for 50 years of Bangladesh independence. And as the High Commissioner kindly referenced, the British Council is also celebrating a special year, because in 2021, uh, we will celebrate 70 years since our first office in Dhaka opened. The UK-Bangladesh relationship is a hugely productive one, and one of its highlights is in education. In January of this year, the Ministry of Primary Education in partnership with the British Council, launched, launched the Training Master Trainers in English program. This will help the English language development of over 2,000 primary trainers. And these trainers will go on to train a further 130,000 primary teachers across the country, helping many thousands of children to learn and improve their English language skills. So if we want to speak to each other, understand each other and learn from each other, a strong starting point is speaking each other's language. That's never been more important than today when we face so many global challenges. Those challenges can only be overcome if we work together, speaking the common language of collaboration. Thank you very much for your, your, your time and attention. Enjoy Bangladesh. Thank you. You said two Bengali words, Joy Bangla. Thank you very much for that. I wonder what did she teach you, the teacher? <laughs> we were looking forward to listening to you speaking in Bangla today. Uh, thank Long you. Long ago, I'm afraid. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Charlie Walker. I know that we need to practice language. I learned French, but I haven't practiced it. I don't know for how many years. And um, uh, thank you very much. We look forward to the collaboration with British Council on the 70th anniversary. And I know that we are collaborating on the Dhaka University's 100 years uh, this year, and which is coming up in July. So we want everyone to know Dhaka University, which is set up by the British during the British India in 1921, would be celebrating 100 years of its coming of age. A centenary and where uh, we are going to, going to organize uh, one conference in July in London and British Council is a partner to Bangladesh High Commission and Dhaka University to that. So looking forward to many celebrations like that to promote culture and education. Uh, uh, we, are, uh, we have uh, one speaker, you know, from the Bangladeshi British community, we have two speakers. Uh, I would request them to make short interventions. Our community is very precious to us. They are the ones who has really conserved uh, our culture, our language, our, our heritage here, here, they organize in Tower Hamlets, the Bangla Mela. That's the first day of the Bengali New Year. And I absolutely adore them for that. I respect them for that. And I want to give floor to Mr. Uh, uh, Sayyid Farooq to speak a few words uh, from the representing the Bangladeshi British community. You have the floor. Farooq Bhai, you have the floor. You have to unmute yourself. Thank you. We can hear you. Thank you, Honorable uh, High Excellency. Thank you, Asker. Amader Pola Simul or Krishna Chula Rongan and Gitch Aska Mother Mon, Bangalir Mon, Aska Atifalgun, Unisobayaner, Aske Kusi February, Aske Din, Amader Mata Notona Kora, Ungi Karadi, Aske Din. A course, Amadir Chetana, Amadir Bishas, Amadir Shangram, Amadir Uitijo. A course, Bangali Robino, Sot Perna. A course of Kredine, Doctor Adjusto Bangas High Commissioner Ayujon, Aprake Soda among Aprako Salam, Jarat Kri, Umson of Postroj and Amadir Manu Sikamontri, Amadir Shamanito Sabek Postmontri, Doctor Deepumoni MP, 
মিস্টার পল স্কালি এম পি সহ সবাইকে আমার পক্ষ থেকে এবং আমাদের প্রবাসী বাংলাদেশের পক্ষ থেকে অনেক অনেক ধন্যবাদ একুশ আমাদের আজকের এই বাসার শহীদ দিবস এবং আন্তর্জাতিক মাতৃভাষা দিবস আজকের এই দিবসে আমরা সম্মান করে শ্রদ্ধা জানাই যাদের রক্তে রঞ্জিত হয়ে আমাদের বাসা ও রক্ত রক্তাক্ত হয়েছে বিশ্বের ইতিহাসে অনেক বক্তারা বলেছেন ছয় হাজার ও বেশি বাসাবাসী মানুষের এই পৃথিবী একমাত্র একটি বাসা যে বাসার হচ্ছে বাংলা ভাষা যেই বাসার জন্য আমাদের ভাইদের রক্ত দিতে হয়েছে সেই রক্তে রক্তরে লেখা আজকের এই বাংলা ভাষা আজকে আন্তর্জাতিক পর্যায়ে স্বীকৃত হয়েছে আমি শ্রদ্ধা জানাই আজকের এই দিনে সালাম রফিক জব্বার বরকত সফিউর সহ নাম না জানা অনেক আমি আজকের এই দিনে শ্রদ্ধা জানাই আমাদের সর্বকালের সর্বশ্রেষ্ঠ বাঙালি জাতির পিতা বঙ্গবন্ধু শেখ মুজিবুর রহমান যেই সেদিনের সেই শেখ মুজিব উনিশশো সাল থেকে বায়ান্নর সাতাইশে ফেব্রুয়ারি পর্যন্ত বিভিন্ন সময়ে বাসা আন্দোলনের নেতৃত্ব দিতে গিয়ে বারবার গ্রেফতার হয়েছেন এবং কারাগারের অভ্যন্তর থেকেও বায়ান্নর একুশে ফেব্রুয়ারি একশো চৌচল্লিশ দ্বারা ভঙ্গের জন্য সেদিন চিরকুট দিয়েছেন আমি শ্রদ্ধা জানাই জাতির পিতা বঙ্গবন্ধু মুজিবের প্রতি আমি শ্রদ্ধা জানাই মহান মুক্তিযুদ্ধে নিহত সকল শহীদদের প্রতি আজকের একুশের মধ্য দিয়ে এগিয়ে যাচ্ছে আজকে বাংলাদেশ একুশের চেতনায় সমৃদ্ধ হয়ে একুশ আমাদেরকে শিখিয়েছে আপোষহীনতার একুশ আমাদেরকে বীজ বপন করেছে বাঙালি জাতি রাষ্ট্র জাতিসত্তার সেই জাতি রাষ্ট্র একুশের পদ্ধরে বায়নের পদ্ধরে বাষট্টি চৌষট্টি উনসত্তর সত্তর একাত্তরের মহান মুক্তিযুদ্ধের মধ্য দিয়ে আমাদের জাতির পিতা বঙ্গ শেখ মুজিবুর রহমানের নেতৃত্বে আজকে আমাদের বাংলাদেশ আজকে আমাদের লাল সবুজের পথ আজকের মুজিব বর্ষে আপনাদের এই আয়োজন অত্যন্ত ইম্পর্টেন্ট আজকে যে প্রতিপাদ্য শিক্ষা এবং সমাজে বহু ভাষার অন্তর্ভুক্তি প্রযত্নের লালন করি আজকে আমরা সবাই মিলে আজকের যেমনি করে আজকের বাংলাদেশে প্রায় চল্লিশটিরও বেশি নিয়ে গোষ্ঠী বাসাবাসী বাংলা ছাড়াও বসবাস করছে আজকের ইন্দোনেশিয়ার প্রায় আটশো উনচল্লিশ বাসাবাসী মানুষের বসবাস আজকের পাপুয়া নিউ গিনিতে আজকের ইন্দোনেশিয়ার ছয়শো উনসত্তর বাসাবাসীর বসবাস আসুন আজকের এই দিনে আমরা একটি এমন একটি রাষ্ট্র এমন একটি বিশ্ব এমন একটি পৃথিবী গড়ে তুলি যেই পৃথিবীতে বেদাবেদ থাকবে না কোনো বাসার কোনো জাতির কোনো নির্গোষ্ঠীর সকল নির্গোষ্ঠী সকল বাসাবাসী মানুষদের সম্মান জানিয়ে তাদের আত্মমর্যাদা দিয়ে আমরা গড়ে তুলতে চাই একটি নতুন পৃথিবী একটি নতুন বিশ্ব সেই প্রত্যাশা আজকের এই দিনে এই করোনাময় বিশ্বে আপনারা সবাই ভালো থাকুন সুস্থ থাকুন নিরাপদ থাকুন জয় বাংলা জয় বঙ্গ থ্যাংক ইউ ফারুক ভাই ফর ইউর বিউটিফুল স্পিচ ইন বাংলা ইভেন দো আর ফরেন ফ্রেন্ড ইন আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড বাট হি হোপড ফর আ ওয়ার্ল্ড ওয়েল বি নো ফ্র্যাগমেন্টেশন থ্রু ইউ নো থ্রু এক্সট্রিমিজম থ্রু ডিভিশনস ইনটলারেন্স উই না হ্যাভ দ্য লাস্ট স্পিকার হুইচ ইস মিস্টার সুলতান শরীফ আনফর্চুনেটলি আব্দুল গফর চৌধুরী উইল নট বি এবল টু জয়েন আস হি বিকেম এ বিট আনওয়েল এস ইউ উই নো দ্যাট ইউ নো হি ইস এন এলডারলি at old age now and uh, uh, he wouldn't be able to join us but mr sultan mahmud sharif who's a uh, 1970 uh, veteran uh, overseas freedom fighter i can call him and that uh, was associated with the representative i request mr sharif to take the floor thank you bangla bola darkar bangla e dhonnobad এবং শুভ সকাল না শুভ দুপুর আজকে এখানে যারা উপস্থিত হয়েছে আমার বাংলা ভাষাভাষী যারা তাদের জন্য যেমন শুভেচ্ছা এবং এই দিনে স্মরণ করে আপনারা যে সভা করছেন যে আলোচনা সভা করছেন পরে কালচারাল ফাংশন করবেন তার জন্য আপনাদের সকলকে ধন্যবাদ বাট দেন এগেইন আই নিড টু স্পিক ইন ইংলিশ ফর those are people who possibly wouldn't 
know much Bengali, but I would like to also communicate to them. Uh, because I have lived here for a fairly long time, over 40 years or so, and uh, helped uh, support people who wanted to learn Bengali, like my children who were born in this country and um, tried to learn their uh, parents' mother tongue. Uh, the support that we got is from our own community originally. And uh, in this long period, like you said, that uh, th this is the third largest um, speaking language, Bengali being, uh, that uh, we needed our children uh, who speak to their mother in their mother tongue, which is Bengali, and when they go to school, there is no way they can, com they can learn and continue their knowledge in Bengali language. Uh, uh, James Bates, uh, Irina uh, Bokewa, and Baroness Patricia Scotland, Dr. Dibumuni, my good friend Paul Colley, and um, the um, uh, uh, and Ben Miller, uh, Mr. Charles Walter, all these people are very effective persons who can help us in this. My feeling at these old days is that all of you should help my our children and grandchildren who have their first language, mother's language as Bengali and who are a very big community in this country and who need support from you that from day one, from uh, preschool days, the children should be assisted along with their parents to learn a second language, which is Bengali, so that uh, they can be equally educated in English as well as Bengali, and Bengali could be one of their subjects uh, which they can do in the universities uh, and to become a graduate and for further education. They'll, they can separate and go to any other subject. But I, I through my High Commissioner, who is a wonderful uh, lady and is very helpful and very supportive of our mother tongue and is working very hard for that. And my Education Minister, my very dear uh, Dr. Dipumani, I would request Government of Bangladesh the British Council and also these um, political leaders and uh, people who can who matter in the society to see that uh, hundreds and thousands of our children who have their mother tongue as Bengali are helped, uh, supported, and like France, like Germany, like Italian uh, languages they should be given equal opportunity to learn this language from school days and continue and continue up to university level so that they can choose. And the far most important thing is that they can communicate with their people and communicate with through, through their language uh, uh, with other languages and uh, other uh, people of other languages. Uh, I, I would, uh, I have taken your time but I would, I would very much appreciate if our High Commissioner also takes it up with all of you and all of you are kind and supportive and helpful to her. Then my community will remain ever grateful to you, not only as community, as citizens of the world who will be able to flourish uh, using their own language and become a very important uh, uh, people uh, in helping every other language and uh, encouraging other languages all over the globe. Like the Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Bangladesh Sheikh Mujib's daughter and the Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina is now working with the International Mother Language Center in Dhaka and trying to uh, develop that center as a center for as many languages as possible. Particularly at the moment, she is doing all our uh, dialects and tribal languages uh, and teaching children at home as well as through the center, their mother tongue. We are doing it in Bangladesh, 
you are a richer country, you are a more capable country, and we would like you to see that our children are educated in both areas. And I've taken your time, forgive me for that, and please help us. Thank you. Joy Bangla, Joy Bangalore, Joy Sekhasna. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sutan Bhai. Uh, thank you for your very encouraging work. A very pertinent point you raised, and I've mentioned in my statement that uh, in oral comments that you know it's important to support the Bangla language and culture schools where uh, Bengali community can send their children to learn Bangla, to learn about Bangla culture. Otherwise, they become disconnected from the culture, and they uh, I know that they have a British identity, but sometimes you know there are other identities that that overtake. So it's important to keep them connected to language and without language, they cannot understand culture. So it's important. So definitely we'll work with Taham Let's Borrow and um, Ms. Paul Scully as well. Um, today, I noticed that, you know, we have been joined by two members of parliament. One is Lord Suri, who I see has been here from the beginning. Uh, 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 hello, Lord Suri. Uh, I, I didn't notice you earlier. And also we have a member of parliament of British Bangladeshi origin, uh, uh, Ms. Apsana. Begum, she's the um, member of parliament from uh, uh, Poplar and Lime House and a uh, very young person who uh, makes us proud. Uh, she succeeded Jim Fitzpatrick. And, uh, uh, you know, this is her first time in the parliament, but uh, we hear best good things about her, that how she's representing our community. And today we are very proud that she's joined us. Uh, I didn't even realize that she's joined us. She's, she's joined us right from the beginning. As such a young, energetic person, I would Ask her to say just two minutes, uh, if something, to our community and to this program. You have the floor, uh, Ms. Begum. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Distinguished guests, assalamu alaikum. It's a pleasure to join you here on Martyrs Day in UNESCO International Mother Languages Day. Languages contain the richness of our heritage and carry forward cultures through generations. They're an emblem of who we are and they are the key to cohesion, tolerance and understanding. The theme of this year's International Mother Languages Day is fostering multilingualism for inclusion in education and society. Recognizing how languages, speaking multiple languages is a skill, but is also a key contributor in advancing inclusion. They help reduce misconceptions and fears about communities. They encourage curiosity and about cultures and groups of people. No more can this be as important as now when 43% of the estimated 6,000 languages spoken around the world are endangered. With every two weeks, a language disappearing in the world, taking with it an entire cultural and intellectual heritage. Where in the UK, the curriculum is narrowing. A narrow range of subjects on offer for pupils poses a risk to the ability for future generations to cope with the rapidly changing world, which they're gonna to have to navigate in light of COVID, online, online where less than a hundred languages are used, even when only a few hundred languages have generally been given a place in education systems and the public domain anyway. We have so much to thank, honor and remember those that died organizing, mobilizing and fighting quite literally for the right to have the Bangla language recognized. The Bangla language movement, the sacrifices of the Shaheed, the martyrs and the efforts every year since to continue to recognize these sacrifices are crucial because the movement was such a unique one in the world. And that's why UNESCO rightly recognized it at the turn of the millennium. I'm proud to represent the constituency of Poplar and Limehouse in a borough which has the highest con concentration of Bangladeshis in the UK, where the rich tapestry preserving Bangla and all of the diverse languages in Bangladesh has traveled through migration where Bangla featured in the protests against racism in the 1970s in Kaya Hamlets, to today, where a total of 90 languages have been identified to be used in the borough of Tower Hamlets. So in marking Martyrs Day and International Mother Languages Day, let us in the UK scale up our commitment to multilingual education and inclusion in education to advance educational recovery in the context of COVID, where we move further online and demand that our schools and curricula are widened to offer the learning of languages such as Bangla from childhood. On the world stage, let us contribute to the United Nations International Decade of Indigenous Languages up to the year 2032 to protect Indigenous communities across the world. And individually, let us reaffirm our commitment to supporting multilingualism 
and the use of mother tongues both at home, at school, and in everyday life wherever we are, because through this we will protect the world's rich, rich tapestry of cultural diversity, protect our diverse communities, and transmit, transmit this cultural richness to generations. Happy International Mother Language Day. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam. Thank you so much, Ms. Begum, for your such inspirational speech. You're such a young person, so much energy and so much positivity in you. I absolutely we congratulate you for being elected to Poplar and Limehouse. What a great pride for Bangladesh, even Bangladesh, our government, to see our Bangladeshi community and particularly women to get to these powerful positions where you uh, decide and actually, uh, you know, dedicate yourself to the welfare of uh, the community that you serve as member of parliament. We invite you to the high commission when COVID is over, but also thank you for your very inspiring work. We look forward to working with you in making Bangla uh, back uh, in the GCSE system and also in town that's for us. Absolutely looking forward. Thank you very much for joining us. Lord Suri, would you like to say a few words? Because I saw that you joined us right in the beginning. I mean, no, no pressure there. Are you really there? Okay, all right, so at this point, uh, we start the cultural program of, of, of today. And I really want everyone to stay back to listen to this particular one. And of course, we have, uh, uh, to begin with, we have the Omur Ekushi song, the International Mother Language Day song uh, by the Newham Music Department. Uh, but after that, we have the Indian High Commissioner with her uh, uh, High Commission's performance. We have the Thai and this ambassador with his embassy's performance. Um, and uh, many other missions and diplomatic missions where high commissioners and ambassadors themselves will perform. So uh, I really uh, request you to stay back. Uh, do we begin today's cultural part of the International Mother Language Day with um, the uh, Omur Ekushi song? This song has been, uh, will be introduced by Newham Music CEO, uh, John Bergens and his team, Nicola Allen, music coordinator, and also uh, the teachers and students of West Ham Church School, Brampton School, and uh, we are so proud to uh, tell everyone that Gauri Chaudhary, our Bengali British uh, singer, very famous and eminent singer, has actually trained them uh, to sing this song. The song has been inaugurated here in Bangladesh High Commission for the first time, but it will be used again and again, this recording, in many programs on uh, Omore Kushe this year. Um, I invite uh, Mr. Newham, uh, Mr. John Bergens, to introduce the song. You have the floor, sir. Mr. John Bergens, are you there? Uh, I was told that Mr. John Bergens, CEO of Newham Music Department, would be introducing the performance. Thank you, Your Excellency. Um, it's an incredible honor to be part of this wonderful International Mother Language Day celebration. Um, Newham, I'll just give a little bit of background before we go into the performance, but Newham, it's in the east of London, of course. It's one of the most culturally diverse regions in this country. And we are very proud. We have a glorious diversity of languages with over 100 languages spoken in our schools. So many of our young people are genuinely uh, bilingual, multilingual. And of course, uh, music, it is music. Uh, music has many different languages, many different dialects. There is multilingualism in music. We can all hear, for example, that Runa Lela's musical language is different from Ravi Shankar. We can hear that jazz played for, by Stefan Grappelli is different from jazz played by Miles Davis. Um, the great English violinist Nigel Kennedy is a passionate advocate for the need to explore our many different musical languages. Playing jazz revolutionized his classical playing. Our young people want their music to explore their musical language more than ever in these COVID times. Our communities, our schools are reaching out to music knowing the rewards that music brings for our young people, their well-being, their sense of belonging. One of the notables in this last challenging year has been the sign up for online music sessions in bands, ensembles, choirs, in this new blended world we're in. 
be on and offline. Music is working in many ways. We are keeping music live. We are producing festivals, play dates, online, offline. We're helping our children celebrate their cultural heritage in song. We're also rallying our young people in their collective. Thank you to the NHS, for example, music videos. Another notable of this year, last year has been the exciting opportunities for our young people to work with professional artists, musicians, the Sheku Kani Masons, the Stormsies, the Nicola Benedettis. So many of these artists are offering their time in this COVID period. Their music is giving our young people a sense of purpose, making them feel part of something bigger, something outside themselves. Never has music been more important than now. We want our young people to have music in their lives, to develop their musical passions, their musical language. We want to encourage their open-mindedness, their musical inclusivity. We want to give them the freedom to imagine music differently. Um, we are going to hear how that sounds. Um, the young people of Newham uh, are going to sing and play that renowned song commemorating the Bengali language movement written by the great Abdul Ghaffar Chowdhury, Bangladeshi born, writer, journalist and poet. I do hope you will enjoy this presentation put together by New Music and led by the wonderful Guri Chowdhury. Uh, thank you. Uh, please enjoy some culture and some music to lift us from where we are in these COVID times. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you so much. It was just amazing. I don't know how you felt. I had goosebumps because this is our Ekushi February Omar Ekushi, and I want to first thank Gauri D, Gauri Chaudhary. What a wonderful performance you have put together with 100 children to honor the 100th birth centenary of our father, the nation, Bangabundu. I forgot to mention that. So there were 100 children, beautiful children, beautiful performers, such talent. They've done all of these on the net, digitally, and they have dedicated this to our Mother Language Day and International Mother Language Day. My tributes and my salute to uh, children, 100 children from uh, Western Church School as well as Brampton School from Newham. And Gauri Chaudhary and Mr. John Bergens, thank you so much for your performance. Uh, we have a continuation of this particular song for two minutes in uh, 12 different languages in uh, you know, respecting the International Mother Language Day. It'll be done by uh, Ohona. Hello everyone, I'd like to take this chance to thank the Bangladesh High Commission UK for giving me this opportunity to perform in front of all the respected delegates. Also, many thanks to New York Music for giving Shirolo a chance to showcase our talent. Even though we're all brought up in the UK, we will never forget our roots. We are truly blessed to have Gauri Chaudhary to lead us back to our culture by teaching us Bengali music here in the UK. Today I'm going to sing Ama Bhai Rokti Rangano in 10 languages, that is Indonesian Malay, Arabic, German, Nepalese, Hindi, French, Spanish, Russian, English, and of course Bengali. <laughs> Near to the mic, we can't hear you properly. Russian. Now she bright ya, 
raio do axipierva, um febraia, no mojan sabi nikakta. English. Our brothers stayed and blood was shed on the 21st of February. How can we forget the history? Ah, 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Ahana. You know, uh, live performance is a bit tricky and sometimes the sound doesn't come so well, but we really, really appreciate your efforts in uh, singing it in 12 languages and you did wonderfully sang wonderfully once again thank you to the entire music team from uh newham uh, i now invite uh, the indian high commissioner mrs guy Sar kumar uh, high commissioner in india uh, a country with which bangladesh has civilizational links uh, our culture our language both are based on sanskrit our two countries have our national anthems written by the same poet nobel laureate Rabindranath tagore um, what can be more heart to heart between two countries so we have great friendship uh, for the past 50 years. And in fact, this year, just like we are celebrating with the United Kingdom, we'll be celebrating our 50 years of diplomatic relations with India. The first country, but for that second country to recognize us in December, 1971. Uh, it'll be followed by a traditional Indian dance, something that we always look forward to in our International Mother Language Day performance. Uh, uh, Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Namaskar. Baroness Patricia Scotland, Secretary General of the Commonwealth, um, Your Excellency, Madam Saida Muna Tasneem, High Commissioner of Bangladesh to the UK. Um, I also um, would like to pay my respects to Honorable Education Minister, Madam Deepamoni, who I had the privilege to meet um, uh, uh, in my previous uh, capacities, uh, Minister Paul Scully, uh, Mr. Ben Miller, Director in the South Asia Department of the FCDO, and dear colleagues uh, in, the British, uh, in the Bangladesh High Commission, uh, Excellencies, distinguished participants from Bangladesh. At the outset, I would like to thank High Commissioner uh, Saida Munat Asneem, and I'd like to uh, join the distinguished speakers uh, before me in conveying on behalf of my government and the people of India, our warm greetings to the government and people of Bangladesh on International Language Day. Uh, indeed, this occasion has a very special significance for inheritors of the great uh, language movement of South Asia. Uh, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibud, Mujibud, Mujib Rahman, who had uh, led the movement from the front had then said, no nation can tolerate the humiliation of its mother tongue. Uh, friends, uh, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman Ji will always be remembered as one of the greatest personalities of the last century. A visionary of courage and conviction and champion of justice, equality and dignity, Bangabandhu had sacrificed and suffered but won for Bangladesh its freedom and independence. Uh, the foundations that he laid for the building of a modern Bangladesh and his legacy have been preserved and progressed by his people. Uh, today, Bangabandhu stands vindicated. His vision continues to inspire as Bangladesh progresses steadily towards the destiny that he had dreamt of. Friends, uh, India and Bangladesh, as Madam uh, High Commissioner of Bangladesh had said, we are interlinked like no other nations on earth. Not only do we share a common border, but we also share a grand cultural heritage, common values, and of course, a common language. Uh, the Bangla language, as we know, belongs to the Indo-Aryan group of languages, and it's closely related to Sanskrit. In fact, in the eighth to 12th century, the Pala rulers of Bengal, who were Buddhists, and whose religious language was Pali, they allowed the emergence of a colloquial uh, language, Gaudiya Prakrit, from which uh, Bangla emerged. And as we know, uh, Bangla further has a literary uh, sadhu bhasha, which is closer to Sanskrit, and the more colloquial Kalit bhasha, which is today the standard informal medium. 
And Bengali contains, of course, many words from Portuguese, English, Arabic, Persian, and Hindi. It was when the former president of India, the late Honorable Sri Pranab Mukherjee, had visited uh, Dhaka in March 2013. And he had been very particular that he would adhere to the, literally st uh, the literary style that uh, I learned about uh, this difference. As we know, the Bangla language uh, was instrumental in transforming East Pakistan into Bangladesh. And the departure of all foreign authorities by 1971 actually gave the country a path to pursue its independence and cultural sovereignty. Though Bangladesh has progressed fast on a trajectory of growth and modernization, the attachment of the Bangladeshi people to their original language and culture has never diminished happily. With this unique set of linkages, it is no surprise, therefore, that both India and uh, Bangladesh and our peoples uh, also share a deep commitment to the same values, to uh, democracy, to equality, liberty, diversity, secularism. And we've always celebrated our commonalities, especially our common language. Our greatest writers and poet laureates, I must mention, uh, in both our countries, uh, uh, poet laureate Rabindranath Tagore, Kazi Nazrul Islam, Ustad Alauddin Khan, Lalon Shah, Jibananda Das, and Ishwar Chandra uh, Vidya Sagarji are read and quoted equally in both nations. While poet laureate Rabindranath Tagore composed the national anthems of both our peoples, as mentioned by High Commissioner Madam Saida Muna, the poems of Kazi Nazrul Islam enthrall his readers on both sides of the border. So friends, it's also natural for India to celebrate Bangladesh's astounding successes, its emergence as an economy with an impressive growth rate of about 8.4% in 2020 has actually set an example for developing countries in the region and across the globe. And the credit for this goes to the Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, her political vision, progressive policies and single-minded devotion to the well-being of her people. Uh, Bangladesh is also proud to have the youngest demography in the world and has the potential to be an incubator of technological, financial and social solutions. And we in India are very proud of that. Bangladesh can play actually a leading role in showing the way to improve quality of life, effectively address climate change issues, create sustainable livelihoods and ensure the achievement of SDGs. So we in India see Bangladesh as a key contributor to growth and development in our region. As neighbors enjoying a close friendship, goodwill, and mutual trust, we are today closely cooperating in the economic sector and many joint initiatives for development in our region. Our, our enviable uh, partnership and connectivity through road, rail, air, waterway, or internet even, has connected our people and brought them a lot of prosperity. Today, we are sharing whatever resources we can to cope with the pandemic and its impact on our economies and our people. We believe that India and Bangladesh must develop and grow together, ensuring that our growth provides more opportunities to both our peoples. So the year 2021 is also, as mentioned, as has been mentioned, the 50th anniversary first year of the Bangladesh Liberation War and the establishment of India-Bangladesh diplomatic ties. Uh, considering the historical significance of these events, both countries have decided to jointly commemorate these anniversaries in India, Bangladesh, and in select third countries. And um, I must uh, recall at, uh, at this juncture that it was a very historic moment when the tri-services contingent of Bangladesh participated in India's Republic Day Parade this year which reflects the strong bonds of friendship between our two countries. So while our governments are engaged in giving new dimensions and direction to our close cooperation, here in London, it is a great pleasure for me to work very closely with Her Excellency High Commissioner of Bangladesh to the UK, Adam Saida Munata Sneem. I take this opportunity to extend my best wishes and unwavering support to you in all your excellent endeavors. As I offer the very distinguished speakers at this event and all participants my warm wishes today, 
I have the pleasant duty to introduce a virtual presentation of Ardhana Rishwara by the celebrated Kuchipudi artist Arunima Kumar. Uh, through the medium of Kuchipudi, Srimati Arunima will enact the story of Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati, who together symbolize the creation of the universe. With all best wishes on this happy occasion, I wish you Joy Bangla. Arunima. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you so much to Indian High Commissioner and the Indian High Commission performance. That was absolutely stunning. We want to thank uh, the performer, um, even though um, I don't, I don't have a name, but it was something to do. Uh, you know, the the expression of dance was to do with Lord Shiva and uh, Goddess Parvati, and we thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, before we go to any performance, we have a few of our High Commissioners and Ambassadors here. I would uh, begin with um, uh, Ambassador of Thailand, who's just next door. And as you all know, I'm a bit biased towards Thailand because I served in Thailand for four years. And I can't help it. But uh, we have Ambassador Excellency Pisanu Subhanajata joining us, uh, Ambassador of Thailand. His, the Thai performance, which is composed by His Majesty, the King of Thailand, 
would be done. Uh, we'll, we'll show it slightly later before a few of the ambassadors speak, but the ambassador has to go and uh, Excellency Pisanu, you have the floor. Swati Ka. Safai the Ka. Oh, thank you, my dear friends. Uh, Your Excellency is the Saida Munas Tasneem, the High Commissioners of Bangladesh to the UK. Uh, Honorables Dr. Deepu Moni, uh, Education Ministers of Bangladesh, Mr. James Bridge, Chief Executives and Secretary Generals of the UK National Commission for UNESCO, uh, Right Honorable Patricia Scotland, QCs, Commonwealth Secretary Generals, Honorable Mr. Paul Scullis, my dear friends, Minister, Minister of State for London, Excellency Mrs. Ms. Irina Bokova, former Director General of the UNESCO, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure and honor to join these historic commemorations on the occasion of the Mujibir's Bangala's language, Matai Days and International Mother Language Day. This year's themes, multilingualism for creative economies and inclusive society is even more timely and relevant for us to reflect on the importance of multilingualism and multiculturalism. In the context of COVID-19, it is important to embrace inclusiveness and respect for diversity at the heart of our recovery and to promote sustaining social cohesion, unity, and peace. Thailand shares a view that the bridging the gap between cultures is the key to peace, stability, and development. And to this end, languages play a vital role. Thailand has been a passionate advocate of a people-centered and inclusive approach to development with a commitment that no one is left behind in our community. As homes to more than 70 living languages, Thailand is committed to upholding multilingualism. At the same time, Thai language, or Pasa Thai, has historically been the very symbol of our national identity and unity. For these reasons, preserving Thai language as a national heritage has long been a common interest embedded across all sectors in our society. His Majesty King Pumipon Adulyadeh the Great had been the national pioneer and driving force in the promotion and conservation of Thai language. Every year, the 29th of July is observed as Thai National Language Day by the royal initiatives to encourage young generations to use accurately Thai grammar and pronunciation. It was also important to note that His Majesty the late King applied every approach, including music composition and song writings, to emphasize an accurate Thai language to the Thai society. On this occasion of the Mujib Yes Bangala Language Matai Days and International Mother Language Day, I am proud to present all of you today the number nine piece out of 49 royal compositions of His Less Majesty the King. This composition entitled Dream of Love, Dream of You, or in Thai, Tewa Pa Ku A more heartwarming anecdote of this song is that on the 12th of August, 1949, Her Majesty Queen Sirikit, the Queen Mother, graciously performed the song Dream of Love, Dream of You, after a dinner reception at the Royal Thai Embassy in London. Thereafter, a royal engagement with His Majesty King Pumipon Adunya the Great was proposed and ensues that very evening. Isn't it a meaningful testimony for the commemoration in February, the month of love? So I hope everyone would enjoy Dream of Love, Dream of You, performed by Son Plu Chorus. Thailand's renowned chorus, which was won numerous international awards, including top prizes in the Kangkokland International Musicals, I stood for in 2019. Thank you, Muna. Thank you for allowing us to have a constructive engagement in this international event. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your um, you know, beautiful statement. Um, um, if you don't mind, we have a couple of ambassadorial colleagues waiting to say something. 
and they, they're the ones who will speak about the culture. And right after that, we'll be playing uh, His uh, Majesty King Bhumibod Adiladej, who's been a great friend of Bangladesh, and I only hold him, the people of Bangladesh hold him in the highest regards. So, you know, thank you very much for presenting us with the original composition by His Majesty. We absolutely look forward to that. And I know that how grand the Thai orchestra can be. So I've been in Thailand. They're just absolutely, they are at par and even better with some of the European orchestras. So absolutely, we look forward to listening to that. Kapun Maka. I, um, I would like to request my friend, uh, Alexandra Miofska of Republic of Northern Macedonia to take the floor. I know you've been waiting for long, my friend, and some other ambassadors are there. Um, uh, we always you know, uh, want to connect from Bangladesh. We have very few embassies in Eastern Europe and also in the Balkan region, and we always want to know their culture. And I hope uh, Ambassador uh, Alexandra will reflect a little bit on that. You have the floor, mm -hmm. Madam Excellency. Thank you. Thank you, my dear colleague, Muna. Uh, dear distinguished guests, dear High Commissioner of Bangladesh, uh, Your Excellency, Saida Muna Tassam, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you, to thanks to, to my dear colleague, uh, Saida Muna Tassam, for her kind invitation for this uh, special event on the occasion of the International Mother Language Day. The concept of diversity in my country, the Republic of North Macedonia, is accepted as a bridge between the different ethnic communities in the country in achieving uh, equal society and opportunities for all citizens. North Macedonia is a civil state of all who live in it, Macedonians, Albanians, Turks, Serbs, Blacks, Roma, Bosniaks, and all other communities. We create uh, language uh, policies that are tailored to the needs of citizens of all ethnic communities. Today, I'm honored to have an opportunity to present my mother language, my mother tongue, Macedonian. Macedonian belongs to the Eastern group of South Slavic languages. The standard Macedonian alphabet contains 31 letters, one letter, one voice, and it is written with Cyrillic alphabet, as my name on the screen. Uh, there are several letters that are specific for Macedonian Cyrillic script, uh, as a letter G or a letter K, and few others as Z, J, L, and N, who are similar to the other languages from the Slavic groups. group. Today, I will be reading a song written by the great Macedonian linguist and poet Vlaje Konevsky. The name of the song is Vesilka, a woman who embroiders or embroiders. The song is written as a rhetorical question with a dialogical form on it. The poet is looking for a companion in the search for inspiration, in finding the appropriate words from which one by one he will embroider what is called a simple and strict Macedonian song. The woman, as a witness to everything that the Macedonian people went through, gives him advice and direction and tells him to pull two threads from the heart, one black and the other one red. The black thread symbolizes the slavery, torment, and suffering of the Macedonian people through history, and the red one, the struggle and the longing for freedom. Marking the centenary of his birth, my government decided to dedicate the 2021 to Blaze Konevsky, one of the greats of Macedonian culture, Macedonian linguist and poet. The national program entitled uh, 2021, a year in honor of Blaze Konevsky, is connected with the UN International Year of Peace and Confidence and also it is written in the calendar of anniversaries supported by UNESCO. His work is exceptional, especially in regard to contemporary Macedonian language. Koneski has made a significant contribution to the codification of Macedonian literature language and to the standardization of the literary linguistic norm. As I said, for today's International Mother's Day Language Day event in honor of Blaze Koneski, I will read for you uh, his song, Vesilka. 
vezelke. Kaži kako da se rodi prosta i stroga makedonska pesma. Od ova srce što so sebe vodi razgovor noćen vo trevoga pesma. Dva konca pare od srce do dragi. Edni od crne, a drugi od crven. Edni od budi morničavi tagi, drugi od kopneš i svetovi strven. Pa sonif, vezi jednolična niza, pesna od kopneš i pesna od maka, koja što vezam na lenena riza, rakav, zabela nevestinska raka. Sudbinsko nešto se polelo za veka, od dve tenički, dva sozvučni zbora. Jednata budi temnica što štreka, drugata budi v krvave na zora. Vezilke, kreni navedena lika, pogledaj v nebo po pretplatne zlatno, te šari tamo i čudesno blika, tvojata vezba na sino to platno. Za tebe nema ni večeren zapad, ti, morno oko na trepetna srna, dve boji tamo ti gora ti kapat, dve šarki tvoji, crvena i crna. Zar ne se plašiš od jarko stanivna, I najmil spomen, deka će ti zgasat, zošto se gubiš, ti stroga, ti divna, drnite ti minat, roko bi se glasat. I najmil spomen, što duša mi blesna se gasi od njih kod sveke bez boja, no ti, što loviš zvuk na čudna pesna, ti si ja kaža, sudbina ta svoja. Happy International Mother Language Day. Thank you, Muna. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you, Alexandra. What a beautiful poem. And our congratulations to poet uh, Karski on his uh, 100th birth anniversary. I do apologize if I pronounce it wrongly. But, uh, you know, thank you so much for your passion and compassion, emotional attachment to your, you know, this famous poet. Uh, it's something similar to Tagore, our casino's rule for us. So I can fully understand. And I'm glad that UNESCO is also observing the 100 years of your poet. So absolutely our standing relation to Macedonian culture. Thank you very much for participating. Thank you. I now have um, Kevin Isaac, the High Commissioner of St. Uh, Kitts and Navis. Um, Kevin, are you there? Yes, I am. <laughs> Kevin, I'm not going to listen to your recorded. Okay, now let me introduce uh, High Commissioner Kevin. He's now the Chair of the Board of Governors of the Commonwealth but he's known to everyone as a great, great poet. Um, you know, um, I don't know if St. Kitts and Nevis has a different language or indigenous language, but I know that their English is impeccable. And Kevin writes poetry in English, and I'm sure in other languages too. But Kevin, you have to recite your poem yourself. You're not going to get away with giving us the video. Now that you're here, you have to recite. We want everyone, our friends from Bangladesh, to listen to you. Please. You have the floor, Kevin. Excellency. Kevin, have you have you been unmuted? Yes, now I am. I am. Yes. Please continue. Rise again. <laughs> um happy um, I want to congratulate you for the for, for a wonderful job that you've been doing today. And I've been really moved by the, the expressions of solidarity and support. And I'm my contribution to, to today is simply this one. It says, rise again. I will rise again. I will free my ambition from the gravity of old tired scars seared into the faces of yesterday. I will cast off jaded skin deep bruises scratched on the eyes of tomorrow and I will dust off my pride and stand tall so my sacrifices will not be in vain. I will rise again. I will shake loose embers of despair. I will rinse haunting memory pains from the baggy garments of my soul and watch discontent roll gently from my back into oblivion. I will refuse submission I will not be deterred from my purpose. I will rebuild my faith in me, in us. I will rise again, even when tears 
rain heavy, and its deluge feeds quagmires of doubt which clay my feet like quicksand. I will rise again for me, for you, for the children. I will stock their pantries with hope until our unquenchable spirit reclaim tomorrow's promise. I will rise again with conviction to liberate serendipity from the jaws of disaffection, for now I know fear's elixir. I will cast aside the millstone of apathy and rekindle my faith in us, draw energy from our strength, for now I know we will rise again. Thank you so much, Kevin. That was so inspiring. I, I you know, everybody's clapping at your, you know, uh, your poem, your creativity and the spirit of the, of the, you know, the entire poem is rise again. And we know that we have to rise again. COVID has really, really transformed our lives. It's so difficult. You know, I have a 19 year old son and I don't know what to do with him. And he needs to rise again. I have to tell him that because people have forgot how to behave normally, you know, staying at home for so long. And, uh, you know, we, we really have to write again, rise again. We really have to, uh, you know, uh, never give up. And we know with vaccines coming into this world, we hope that we'll be meeting again face to face at the Commonwealth. Uh, so absolutely, thank you so much. You, you, you know, lifted our spirit. So thank you so much for uplifting our spirit. And, uh, you know, best of luck to you. Stay safe. Thank you, Kevin, for joining our International Mother Language Day. We now have our good friend uh, from Georgia, Hi, uh, Ambassador of Georgia to London, Her Excellency, uh, Her Excellency Sophie Katsarava, MBE. Uh, Georgia has been a very active country uh, and a friendly country. And we have been, uh, you know, uh, your, Sophie's uh, predecessor, um, also, uh, Ambassador Tamara was a good friend. She's now at the IMO, but uh, uh, I want to welcome uh, Ambassador Sophie to our group. And uh, last year also, Georgia participated at the IMLD event, and we are just extremely, extremely honored and happy that Excellency you've joined us. Excellency Sophie, you have the floor. Ambassador of Georgia. Ambassador Katsarava, can you hear me? Because I saw you just a while ago. You had your country's flag next to you. I hope we'll be, we have been able to unmute you. I think we're having a little bit of technical problem here because I know that ambassador is there, but I don't know. Is there any problem in unmuting her? Then we can go to the next performance. We can see ambassador Sophie. Uh, okay, um, I don't know if ambassador Sophie is there. I'm going to text her in the meantime. Um, can we uh, then uh, present the Thai performance in the meantime? Uh, can I ask my colleague to show the Thai performance that 